and welcome to a new vlog and video of the Cruise Vibes and today it's day 4 on board of the Excellence Princess and today we have a very special day ahead of us because we are sailing all the way to Vienna. We started yesterday in Regensburg and it takes more than 30 hours to go from Regensburg to Vienna and this is the longest time I've stayed on a river cruise ship without a stop in between so this is quite an interesting day and I'm very curious whether I will enjoy it or it will maybe just be very very boring. So I will let you know in this video and we are starting very early in the morning. I woke up quite early and we are currently close to the city of Mauthausen south of Linz and here we can take a look at a very nice breakfast buffet. Breakfast is also very good on board of the Excellence Princess. In this case I was one of the first guests to be in the restaurant that's why it looked perfect like this and the restaurant was still empty. You also can order some additional dishes from the menu, so also breakfast is pretty pretty good. In the meantime we are getting closer to the Strudengau, which is a 25 km long rally in the Danube. And it's one of the most beautiful parts of the Danube. Here we have the castle of Dornach and that means that we are now entering the Strudengau. As you can see the valley is getting narrower, the hills are getting higher. And that is the typical landscape of the Strudengau. If you're lucky, like I was today with the weather, you can even see the Alps in the background. Now we are reaching the city of Grein, which is the biggest city and the capital of the Strudengau. 2,900 inhabitants and one of the main sites of the city is the Castle Grein, dating back to the year of 1495. And of course you can see it very well from the river cruise ship. So I would highly recommend to go outside when you're sailing through the Strudengau and sailing past the city of Rhein. There's also a very interesting railway line, the Donau Uferbahn, the Danube Bank Railway. But unfortunately only parts of this railway line are still in use and I'm hoping to be able to show you those parts in the future as well. Here we can see the so-called Giesenbach Brücke or Giesenbach Bridge, a very beautiful viaduct of that railway line and then we are going past the city of St. Nikola Struden before reaching Samigstein. Here we can also see a monument Additionally to some cities and the landscape you can also sometimes see some castles like here in Samigstein there are a few castles and also a bit further on you have the ruin Freienstein and then we are slowly reaching the end of the Strudengau as we are approaching the lock of Persenbeug. This lock has two chambers 230 meters long and 24 meters wide so that means there's a lot of space and there can be two ships together next to each other in the lock which is the case also now there's a freight ship together with us in the lock and we will go down 12.3 meters and what's quite interesting about this lock is that right next to it at the lower end there is the castle of Persenbeug first mentioned in the year 907 and now we can take a look at this beautiful castle and the lock and here in the background we can also see another river cruise ship, the Avalon Impression. We will see her later on a bit better. Here we can see the freight ship next to us and as you can see there is still a lot of space available as the locks on the Danube are pretty spacious. And here we are already down and the gates are opening and now we are continuing. We are leaving the lock first because we are a bit faster than the freight ship which as you can see here is loaded to the absolute maximum. We are now leaving the lock and that means that we will now be able to enjoy a fantastic view of the castle of Persenbeug. Now 
Once we left the lock, we can see on the other side of the river the city of Ips, written YBBS, with around 5,700 inhabitants. Also, there are some more chances to see the Alps in the background, and now we are already in the next lock, the lock of Milk, and here we can see the Avalon impression a bit closer as we are going next to her, as also this lock is 24 meters wide. In this case, we were leaving the lock first, even though we arrived after the Avalon impression, because she was turning afterwards and docking in Milk, and we were continuing on to Vienna. Milk is one of the most famous and popular docking locations for river ships on the Danube because of the Monastery of Milk. So here we can see another river cruise ship, the Maxima of Nico Cruises. And in the background we can already see the Monastery. It is a UNESCO heritage and a very very impressive building. So here in the background we can see the Monastery of Milk. If you spend some time in Melk with the cruise ship, there will be an excursion to the monastery and I would highly recommend doing that excursion. And shortly after Melk we are passing the castle Schönbühl from the 11th century, situated on a rock about 40 meters above the Danube. Very very impressive and beautiful building and that also means that we are now approaching the Wachau. The Wachau is probably the most beautiful part of the Danube. A very very beautiful valley with rocks and vineyards where you can mainly find Grüner Ferdliner and Riesling but there's also some fruits for example that are grown here as well. As the weather was getting better and better I was spending my day on the sun deck enjoying the fantastic view of several castles and the landscape here in the Wachau. For example here we can see the castle ruin of Ackstein and there are so many interesting sights to see so I really enjoyed spending my time here on the sun deck. Of course I took a nice and cool drink and I now let you do the same that I did. Just enjoy the landscape for a bit. We've just passed the city of Spitz and now we are right next to the impressive church of St. Michael, St. Michael. And shortly after we are sailing past the Weissenkirchen city with around 1,400 inhabitants and a very impressive church as well. And there was also another river cruise ship docked there, the DCS Amethyst, which is a sister ship of the Maxima and in my opinion also a very interesting type of ship. And I hope that I will be able to show a ship like this to you in the future as well. And after passing Weissenkirchen, we are reaching the main highlight of the Wachau, which of course is the city of Dürnstein. Dürnstein is just a very small city with around 800 inhabitants, but it is the capital of the Wachau and the most beautiful city of the Wachau, because you have very impressive rocks. You have the castle ruin Dürnstein high above the city, dating back to the 12th century and of course you have the famous blue tower of the church of Dürnstein. This blue bell tower is the most famous building and also one of the main sites of the Wachau. It's also a symbol of the Wachau. Here we can see it, very very beautiful and interesting building. There are also some docking locations for river cruise ships so if you're lucky to get one of those with your ship you will have just a very short walk to see this impressive city close by or you can also hike up to the castle. 
which we can see here in the background. So the landscape here is pretty impressive and it's a very, very nice place. Here we can see the ship Asilva docked in Dürnstein, part of the Lüftner fleet, but currently sailing for Phoenix Eisen, a German cruise operator. And here you can see where the docking location is. So as you can see, it's quite close to the city center of the small city of Dürnstein. Just a few minutes later, we are reaching Krems. And if you remember my videos from the Riverside Mozart, you will also remember this city because in this video we spent a day here in Krems. But of course we are now also sailing past Krems because we are heading directly to Vienna, our destination of today. In the background we can see the monastery of Göttweig, also UNESCO World Heritage, dating back to the 11th century. Here we can see the docking locations of Krems and after Krems the landscape is getting a bit less spectacular. And then it was time for lunch. Starters from the buffet and as you can see right here also my main course I took from the buffet. As you can see clearly it's not looking as nice as when it's coming from the kitchen. And of course you can also get free coffee all day long in the speciality restaurant and in the lounge. And here we are sailing past the former nuclear power plant of Zwentendorf which was never in use cost more than 8 billion shilling and that was the biggest failed investment in the history of Austria. Shortly after we are approaching the city of Tulln where we are firstly going under the Rosen Bridge, the Roses Bridge and then we are also going past another bridge in Tulln which is quite low so the captain had to lower the wheelhouse and here we can see the ship Regentag which belonged to Friedensreich Hundertwasser. There's also a stage swimming on the Danube and here we are now approaching this rather low bridge so everybody had to leave the rear part of the sun deck, had to wait in the front. As you can see this bridge is pretty low so for safety reasons the rear part of the sun deck which is a bit higher was closed for a short moment. Here we can see a river cruise ship of Arma Waterways with mainly American guests and then we are getting closer to Vienna already. And I was actually pretty sad that we are already approaching Vienna because I really enjoyed the day on the river. It was very, very relaxing. I just spent almost the whole day laying on the sun deck, enjoying the sun, listening to some music, having some nice drinks. And it was just pure relaxation. So it was very, very nice and far away from being boring. So I can highly recommend doing a sea day on the river. Here we are approaching the last lock, the Lok Gereifenstein, and we can now take a look how it looks to go through a lock with a time lapse. Now we are in the lock, going down 14.6 meters, and then we are continuing on heading to Vienna. After the lock it just takes a few more minutes and then we are already sailing past the docking location of Wien Nussdorf, which is a bit far away from the city center. We had a better docking location at the Reichsbridge and from there you can easily take the underground and you reach the city center in just a few minutes. Here we can see yet another river cruise ship Viva 2 heading upstream and then it was time for dinner before I was heading into the city. Because we stayed overnight of course so there was enough time to have an evening walk in Vienna. Here we can see the dinner which was nice as always as I said food on board is amazing and I was always looking forward to the meal times because the food was just simply so very nice. And here I'm leaving the ship after dinner and now I can show you the way that you have to take to get to the city center. So we had the best possible docking location right next to the bridge and all you have to do is going to the bridge, going up, but then not cross the bridge but go in the other direction and then you will get after a few minutes to the underground stop Vorgartenstraße. And from there you can take the underground 
to Schwedenplatz, Stephansplatz or Karlsplatz. Stephansplatz is right in the city center, Schwedenplatz is at the beginning and Karlsplatz is at the end of the city center. I decided to go to Karlsplatz and walk back to the Schwedenplatz. If you take the right exit at Karlsplatz you will be right at the Opera of Vienna and right next to the famous Hotel Sacha and the Café Gerstner. And then you just have to walk straight on through the main shopping street of Vienna till you reach the Stephansplatz, Stephans Square, where you also have the famous St. Stephans Cathedral. Vienna is extremely beautiful, especially when it's dark outside because almost everything is illuminated and it's looking amazing. So I highly recommend visiting Vienna by night. When you are at the Schwedenplatz, you can take the underground back to the ship or what I would recommend is taking the tram line one. Again, back to the Karlsplatz because this is going on the so-called Ring which is a very beautiful street where there are a lot of famous sites like the Burgtheater, Hofburg and many other very famous buildings. It's a very very beautiful thing to do, taking the tram around the ring. That's the line number one, bringing you from Schwedenplatz back to the Karlsplatz. And from there I went back down to the underground, but I didn't go back to the ship yet because there's another thing I would recommend doing if it's dark outside and that is visiting the Prater. So you have to take the underground to the station Praterstern and then you can visit the Prater or better Wurstelprater because Wurstelprater is the name of the famous amusement park while it's the Prater is the whole park so including a huge forest but you want to go to the Wurstelprater where you have roller coasters and several other attractions also of course the famous ferris wheel and many other things to see and it's extremely beautiful because obviously you have a lot of light and it's looking amazing when it's dark outside so i would recommend going there you do not have to pay any entrance fee entrance is free if you want to go on a ride you have to pay separately for each ride so this can get a bit expensive but if you just want to take one or two rides that is quite reasonable and as I said, the entrance is free, so it's a recommendation of mine to visit also the Prater. From there you can either walk back to the ship or take the underground for one station. Back to the Vorgartenstraße, here we can see another beautiful church. And then it was time to head back on board, have a nice last drink on board and then it was time to sleep. And that's already it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here you can see when the next video from the next day on board will be uploaded. And the name of the song as always I'd like to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please consider to comment, like, subscribe or share the video link and I hope to see you in my next video then.